Hello my loves, welcome back. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be working directly with your spirit guides and with the divine to provide you extra clarity, confirmation, and guidance into issues of the heart that you have been focusing on or just general guidance as a whole. I have three piles that I've set up for you guys, but I find this very special and unique because each one of these piles is not only represented by a crystal, but also a fixed candle. Each one of these fixed candles are available in my shop, and I felt really called to work with my more jumbo, larger size crystals to allow you to check them out, work with them, see how they feel, to again, tap deeper into what spirits, messages are available for you. Big time, I felt so called to talk to you guys about um, confirmation and clarity, things that your spirit needs to hear to provide relief, comfort, support, and big time clarity and direction into the, the point that you're at in your life. We, at the time of me filming this, it is <clears throat> airy season. We are beyond the middle phase of airy season. And this is a lot of new energy, a lot of new birth, and a lot of new beginnings, but it can also be very challenging and require a lot from us when it comes to being courageous and bold and assertive and dominant and um, I don't want to say aggressive but really kind of clear in who you are, what you're about, what you want, intentions that you're setting and stepping forward into that life with your head held high. So um, shout out to one of you guys from the Bahati Vibe Tribe who this morning she reached out to me via Instagram and was like, hey Jess, today would be an awesome day for a pick a card reading, wink wink, and I was just like, you know what, you're right. So shout out to you babe for, for that comment and for being so polite and respectful. So for those of you guys that are gravitating towards pile number one or if you want to check out pile number one, this is the Nectar of Life candle that's available within my apothecary. I don't know if I said this already, but this is actually a client's fix. All of these candles are actually fixed for clients. But this one in particular, she's been, she gave me permission to share this with the group. But this is definitely a candle that is typically, I fix for sweetness in life to allow in more romance and gentleness and softness and innocence and purity, things that we want to pull towards us, big time receptive energy, but things that is that we want to pull towards us that are going to make us happier, that are going to make us more fulfilled, that aren't necessarily so passionate and fiery. So this is for those that really need that sweet, soft, gentle touch um, while still magnetizing and attracting. And the crystal that I have for pile number one is rose quartz. For pile number two, this is a green money and a business money and business um, fixed candle. This one is also fixed for a client. And the intentions are about you know business growth and monetary wealth and security and those types of things. But also, as I was sitting with this candle, I felt big time called to talk to you guys or I felt a message revolving around the heart chakra, which of course green represents the heart chakra. So the, the openness of the heart, your ability to receive, your ability to attract and to magnetize to you, not only monetary blessings and abundance, but you know, things that you, you've been waiting for that your heart kind of has been feeling a blockage around and your crystal is this big mumbo jumbo which has been charged by a few full moon lights. I use it for specific intention but in my own personal life but allow yourself to be called and guided to this crystal for whatever intentions you know you're working on at this time. The third pile is the Higher Wisdom candle. This one has not been fixed yet, however it will be. This is, as you can see, it's purple, but and usually I fix it for working your higher intention, working with your intuition, working with spirit guides messages, and having more psychic, intuitive connectedness throughout your day. I personally love to work with this candle at night, big time at full moons, and of course it's available within my shop, but again, this, if you are drawn to this candle, it doesn't necessarily have to be connected to your psychic third, I don't know why I was just about to say third party, but this third perspective, this higher perspective, things that is that you might be intuitive, sensing and feeling that, or maybe you're just drawn to the color, whatever, whatever it is. And then the crystal that we have here is this beautiful black serpentine egg crystal, or it's called a dragon's egg, that I absolutely adore and I keep near me while I'm working readings all the time. All right, that being said, um, the tarot cards that I'll be working with 
today I feel called to work with are from the Mermaid Tarot. I'll link it down below. And each of the Oracle cards have been shuffled and pulled. I haven't seen them, but I will also link them down below. I will see you guys at your timestamps. All right, so for those of you guys that chose the Rose Quartz Baby or the Pink Nectar of Life Candle, this is your reading. Just really, if you can, just pause and sit with this. I'm gonna put it here for you. Because this candle truly is one of my favorites to work with. It's very Venetian in its energy, which I truly, truly love. But it's definitely giving off interesting vibes right now. And for those of you guys that don't know, when I'm fixing candles, I sit with the energy of the intention and I sit the, with the energy of the candle and allow myself to kind of focus and you know see where spirit is guiding me or pulling my attention to and I do this for each of my clients individually one of the things that's standing out to me with this candle right now um, without even looking at these cards is big time energy of innocence and gentleness but of course that comes with this candle but I just am really getting a strong connection to that I'm also feeling and picturing butterflies which is so funny because this candle has butterflies on it but I'm seeing a lot of butterflies kind of flitting around but I'm also feeling like I don't know if it's like a storm or like a wind or a breeze it's kind of pushing them a little bit but they're still kind of flitting around but they kind of are getting tossed like it's very much I don't know if you guys are picking up on that but it's very flitty like all of these little flits are coming around here um, and usually what that means is that this is spirit telling you right now that if you chose this candle I feel like you are attracting or you are being attracted to certain things but that are very clear to you. I feel like you know exactly what it is that you are calling out or that you are speaking for. This is not, this doesn't feel like a pile that is kind of going with the wind. It feels like it's more intention based. It feels like it has a bit more direction than just being like, well, whatever the universe has for me is what it is that I want. This is something very specific. Um, I feel though with the wind kind of blowing, this breeze that is that I'm seeing and the butterfly kind of flitting around and flip, like flipping around, there's this really, I don't want to say the word is cautionary tale. There's this cautionary warning a little bit that says, be, consider, there's not be, it's about considering. Spirit is almost gently nudging you to consider timing. And that there are certain circumstances that are outside of our control that can change the course of our direction or change the course of how things manifest and I'm almost getting a bit of a little delay with this spirit is not saying that you need to like totally pause I just feel like I'm hearing the word disregard there's this message of don't disregard the blessing or don't disregard or be disappointed by how things might be manifesting or how things might appear in your life right now because it's almost like we have these gusts of wind or you have this gust of wind that's kind of blowing through right now that's catching you off guard and as I'm saying that you have the seven of wands reversed and you also have nine of swords upright and king of cups and I'm not sure what this card is here because it's still flipped upside down and I don't feel called to flip it over yet but with the nine of I'm sorry, with the Nine of Swords and with the Seven of Wands reversed, this is about being really careful not to be caught off guard. And this is not something, it's like a plane. I'm just watching a plane drive by or fly by right now. It's like a plane going this path. You know, it's not doing anything wrong or it hasn't, everything is right, but it gets caught in a little wave of turbulence. And Spirit is almost saying, don't get freaked out or uncomfortable with the destination or if you're going to arrive to the destination, turbulence is bound to hit. It's just circumstantial. At the root of your, at the base of your reading, we have six of pentacles here, and I really feel called to look at this. This is about be, being very observant and cautious about when you, when you move, when you invest, when you contribute, and when you receive. So big time with the Nectar of Life candle, there's, there's a lot of 
learning how to be more receptive and falling back, very feminine energy, right? So that spirit can kind of can show up for you or other people can show up for you. And King of Cups is showing me, I'm hearing the word stability, like emotional stability. King of Cups says, even as he has these fish kind of swirling around, it almost, in, in the background behind him, it's almost like tr big time trust. Trust where you're at, trust where your heart is guided, trust what you are attracting, trust what is attracted to you. Not in a sense that you, you know, do anything reckless or, you know, you, you move, you disregard, that's a big word that keeps coming through, that you disregard your intuition, but you just don't feel too challenged by it, if that makes any sense. Now, what's this card? Wow, Three of Swords. So this is Spirit saying, I just am getting this sense of this butterfly, it's just this beautiful thing that's flitting through and then these gusts of winds kind of blow forward and it kind of knocks it around and shakes you up. And Spirit is saying, listen, the biggest, the hardest thing to do sometimes, I'm almost hearing the word sacrifice, you have to sacrifice your knowingness of every single moment or you having confirmation in your spirit that you are on the right path all the time in order for the path to be secure if that makes any sense what this means is that you're surrendering your peace of not peace of mind but you're surrendering these signs that give you a temporary peace of mind surrender them to the divine that way you know things continue to effortlessly unfold and that you don't get disappointed or defeated or frustrated or beat yourself up or beat something else up in the process as it's unfolding. This is emotional stability. So regardless of what is going on in the wind, no, regardless of what's going on in the world, no matter, regardless of what's going on in your mind, spirit is saying, please let your guard down. Enter m deeper into a space of vulnerability and transparency enter deeper into a space of receptivity, that's gonna be your sacrifice. That's actually gonna be your sacrifice. Um, I don't know why sacrifice is the word. I think some of you guys are very, you know, I, I get this really strong sense from this pile that you understand that there's gonna require a certain level of vulnerability. Look, six of pentacles keeps jumping out for you. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a certain level of um, vulnerability and transparency about your feelings and your emotions that you have to share. And look at this, there's little butterflies working. I just feel like there's something in the mix, there's something in the works, but there's this gust of wind that like bursts through and it just kind of shakes you up a little bit and has you second guessing your intuition, your path, your progress. Is this the right thing? Are we going in the right direction? And it's causing a lot of hurt, doubt, resistance, frustration. But you, you pick the, this pink card for, or you pick this pink candle for a reason. It's very receptive. I, I usually charge this candle. Look at this. Literally, the chariot card. The chariot card, for those of you guys that aren't enrolled in my Sacred Circle Tarot School, it's about working with the um, shadow sides of the self as well that are tough to sit with and the lighter sides of the self that we might feel comfortable and even proud of. Either one of them work with us. And Ace of Pentacles is giving me this feeling that I'm hearing from you guys. This is definitely your voice saying, I've invested my time, I've invested my energy into you know this happening or this coming to fruition or into this person or into my life or into my garden or into my whatever, fill in the blank. You know, and it's almost like doubting the progress or doubting the journey. And if you're not in a space of doubt, Spirit is showing up for you today to show you that you are clearly on the right path. Um, but sometimes, you know, these little hiccups or these little flubs, they're, they're actually meant to happen. They're supposed to be factored in. And in fact, it's like a pilot. I just keep getting this metaphor of this plane. The pilot flying the plane saying, oh, folks, we have some turbulence from a storm blowing in from East Georgia. Um, shouldn't, should be, 
you know, mild to moderate. So just, we'll turn on the fasten seatbelt light. So you, <laughs> sitting there, you're not gonna get caught off guard by it. You shouldn't be got, cut, caught off guard by these little blips, these little bumps in the road. In fact, we're almost planning for them. So when that happens, you don't wanna get into this nine of swords type energy of worst case scenario thinking. You actually wanna kind of trust and maybe find a way to enjoy it. And it feels like this big sacrifice. You are sacrificing your um, feelings of, I, I don't know why I heard sanity. I don't know why I heard sanity. But I think some of you guys, your, your sanity, like sometimes you might drive yourself crazy or drive other people crazy, so to speak with your fears and your concerns. But when things don't feel like they're going out, like this might be, you know, your biggest fear. Like whatever it is that you're dealing with, this, you might have a lot on the line, especially with Ace of Pentacles being invested here and the Chariot ha having been really invested. Just take some time with yourself with this Hermit card to really kind of, I don't wanna say fall back away from others or fall back away from the world, but fall into, trust fall, into spaces that are really beautiful. And I see this as gardens. I see this as well, going for a walk outside. I see this as spending time with family and friends and allowing the sweetness, the nectar of life to drip back in. And that's what this candle is really all about. That's what you need to sacrifice is you kind of putting your hands in the pot and, and finding out how it's gonna work. Exam for example, uh, the plane that you're flying into this destination the pilot tells you we're going to be experiencing some turbulence. You don't run into the, the pilot's quarters and say, okay, you know, I'm going to help him fly this plane because I'm terrified of turbulence right now or I'm terrified of where we're headed. You trust the fact that he's going to navigate through and that you are safe. You have no control in the matter outside of buckling up your seatbelt and preparing for little bumps on the road. It happens. It happens. And spirit is really telling me and guiding me to tell you that it is okay. It is okay, and the, the biggest, your word, you guys, was sacrifice. So you are going to sacrifice your sanity a little bit, you know, for the sake of your sanity. So that means that, you know, you might be going through these tumultuous bumps, but instead of going in and putting hands on, all hands on deck, actually disconnect and go for a walk in things that are sweet, like nectar, things that are sweet. Go to the park hang out with your friends, play with children, play with a puppy, swing in a hammock, read a book, watch a movie that's based upon comedy, do your makeup, do your skincare. It's like, it's like the very opposite of what you wanna do. Look, my loves, Lily, time of new birth. Snow, awakening dreams. So this is showing me that something has kind of been dormant. Like we have winter here and right when spring happens, that's when the lilies pop, pop up. It's like a resurrection. And when this is being resurrected, we don't force it. We allow it to be. So you can't force the, the snow to thaw. You can't force the buds to pop up and bloom overnight. We allow them we give them the respect and the space that they deserve to show up and to be and to grow and to be fragrant and to reveal themselves to us instead of digging in. Honesty. I don't know why, but this is connecting me big time to the Hermit card, the Nine of Swords, and the Three of Swords. It feels like some of you guys are waiting for an like a message to come through, like an honest revelation. I don't know why that's something that is coming through, but you're like waiting for someone or something to have a revelation on like what you are, what this is, where this is going, what's happening. And I just feel like it's kind of causing a lot of tumultuous energy within you that's big time freaking you out or causing a little bit of turbulence, causing a little bit of frigid, like frigid energy. And still it's like, can try to trust a little bit here. No matter what the outcome is or where this energy is sitting currently, no matter where this seed has been planted and how it will grow, allow it, like kind of respect and, and trust the fact that things do work out for the highest and greatest good, but also on top of that, protecting your mental and emotional beings because it helps you to attract more Look, the essence of all Buddhas, I have the power to make each moment sacred. Everything is material for my liberation. So this is bringing me back to the energy of the butterfly. 
and also the, the energy of Seven of Wands reversed and the Chariot. Seven of Wands reversed, I know some of you guys will look at this and you'll be like, oh, this is a negative card. There's no such thing as positive and negative cards within the tarot, it just is what it is. I teach that all the time in Sacred Circle. But this is about you liberate yourself by letting your guard down. You liberate yourself by not being rigid. You liberate yourself by having things kind of pull through for you. It gives you the freedom to relax. It gives you the, this, the freedom to enjoy. It gives you the freedom to attract. All of those things are really powerful and they give you peace of mind. Compassion, I recognize suffering in order to release it. Curiosity breeds compassion. So, oh my goodness, look, there's a little butterfly right there. I don't know if you could see that, but I'm getting, I was getting big time butterfly energy. So compassion is really big because it says that it almost like respects, it's big time for me, it's about, you know, respect. It says, I don't need to have gone through what you've gone through or lived through what you've lived through in order to be able to have compassion and kindness and consideration and lovingness towards you. And that gives freedom, that gives freedom to others, that gives freedom to yourself, that gives freedom to the situation. So any type of resistance, blockage, or fear that you're experiencing, have the courage and the wisdom truly to let it go, to release it, to surrender it, and show up with compassion and grace for yourself, for the situation, and for others. The novice, innocence, beginner, ignorance, new skills without practice, unstable, curiosity, and the high priestess discernment. I don't know what that word is. Prophecy, and then also vision. So I just feel like Big time, this is an energy of respect. Um, this is, especially with time of new birth, this is about respecting this new, this newness. And that was one of the things that I said to you at the very beginning is the word innocence. It's not about you being innocent, no matter where you're at in your journey, no matter where you're at in your life, doesn't open the door for you to be taken advantage of or for you to be vulnerable without reason. Innocence means that you're open and you're curious to where this is going and what will happen and what will occur. And asking questions means that you're not making assumptions. Asking questions means that you're not locked into your own perspective. You're considering the, the perspective of the divine, of another person, or how things are going to manifest and reveal themselves. And that's pretty awesome. Regardless, love in spite of it all. Before this odyssey ever began, there was you, your best friends, and a wide-eyed curiosity, big time message on curiosity, among you about who would be the first to leave, the first to forget, the first to kiss, the first to tell, and the first to fall, the first to get back up, and the first to remember that it all began with a dare to love in spite of it all. Is that you, Megatroid? P the universe, P.S. I remember the glint in your eyes, all three of them. So this is the third eye, the higher, the higher intuition, especially with the hermit card. Three eyes, that means the two eyes that you see that are your perspective, and the third eye that gives you a deeper perspective, a higher perspective from the divine's eyes. And that's when you start to see, honestly, I am going to be compassionate to myself. I'm going to be kind to myself. I'm going to be kind to others. And not judge it or come in with harshness, but come in with gentleness and receptivity. Magnify your intentions. I'm definitely seeing this within the hermit um, stage that you're in right now especially with the High Priestess here, and especially with the Ace of Pentacles and the Chariot card here, you want to magnify your intentions by not expecting the worst, but breathing life, the best of life, into your intention. You are healed. So this is, I'm really getting this big space of Three of Swords, not harboring on the past, and staying in a state of present right now. And for some reason, this Honesty card is giving me, it's really tying me into the card of healing. I feel like what you're going to hear, see, manifest through crackling of the candle is going to be very healing for you and very much a release. It's gonna be very much liberating. And I, I'm really getting two separate energies here. So you and another, especially with the rose quartz energy and the nectar of life candle, it's, I just feel like setting intention for healing around the both of you if this is a love re regarding a question re revolving around love or things that you love that you're manifesting so speak healing over them speak healing over yourself speak healing over the time and and don't see the turbulence as a pitfall or a, a, something that handicaps you or holds you back 
Unfinished Sympathy, Happy Happy, and Never Ending Story. So with these two cards, I'm getting these like swings, and it's giving pulling me back into the chariot. The chariot again learns how to balance the dark sides with the light sides, and works needs to understand how to work with both. We have two things here: Never Ending Story, Unfinished Sympathy, Symphony, along with Happy Happy. So there's this part of you that, or this other party that starts feeling like, you know, it's failing, it's falling apart, it's not moving forward, it's not happening, it's not manifesting, and then there's days where you swing up, or they swing up, and it's like everything is right on track, everything is right on target. And the goal with the Six of Pentacles card is to learn how to balance both of those feelings, learn how to balance both of those perspectives, and work with it, not fighting against it. Also, this is really telling me that anything that you're feeling that is a repeating cycle of heartache and suffering, it's, it's not, it's giving a chance to kind of repeat in order to rectify itself, in order to heal itself. So don't, with having said that, you don't want to repeat, um, you know, old experiences that you've had by expecting it, projecting it, and attracting it. And as these things kind of show up again, in order for you for your healing, in order for this truth to come in, or this enlightenment, and this freedom to come in, you want to magnetize your intention so that there's a different outcome. And the best way to do that is to let go, let God surrender, and go back into that sweet space of pureness, innocence, beauty, love, higher vibration, attraction, and just bliss out for a little bit. That's going to change the dynamic here big time. It's also going to thaw out the ice. And it's going to, you know, heat up these seeds and help them to grow faster. I hope that this message makes sense for you guys. Please let me know down in the comments. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And you can also check me out on the Hottie Life Podcast. I'll see you soon. All right, my loves. So for those of you guys that chose the money candle, this is your reading and this is your crystal. So these are the pile, the oracle cards that we have here, but I will be shuffling from the mermaid tarot as I said below. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in because I'm already getting messages. I'm getting big time electricity from this green candle right now. Big, big time electricity. I know that I told you, <laughs> and as I said, that these cards just jumped out. So as you guys know, or as I was explaining earlier, that green, of course, is attracted to or used to attract money, financial security, to bless your businesses, but it's also connected to the heart chakra. And I'm just getting these little zaps, like these big time zaps, these little electric electrodes, that's what I'm going to call it, that just keep sparking off and firing off. And it's as I'm sitting here and talking to you guys but in my head I'm asking spirit okay what is this I'm getting a lighter like a lighter someone trying to light the you know like a Bic lighter when they keep flicking it or trying to light um like a fire starter and these sparks keep coming out so and flicking out so it's showing me that something you or something is trying to start something is trying to I don't want to say attract but be um come to life and when it does it's very powerful it's very big um it's it's like it almost i don't say that it connects to survival but it's like if you watch people who try so hard to light a fire when they're out in the wilderness or when they're out camping it's because that fire is what they're going to use to cook if that fire is going to be used for warmth that's going to keep away predators you know, so keep away bugs and all those things are essential to your sur survival. And that's the weight and the magnitude of what's coming off of this candle and the weight and the magnitude that's coming off of this candle. Something is about to start. Something is about to be really big and momentous in your life. Um, and as I'm saying that, I just look over and my birds, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have birds and they're flying around the cage and flitting their wings and dancing and jumping around a lot. And it just goes to show that this is even more so this energy. So something is about to really take off or something is in the process of taking off. Okay, lots of 10 energy here. Wow. Okay, so we have 10 of swords, 10 of wands, 8 of swords reversed though, and 4 of swords. Now just because the 4 of swords 
is upright and four of swords is the number four and it's about rest I'm actually getting a big sense of the energy of number 10 around this, especially with the 10 of swords here and the 10 of wands card here. Both of them are reversed. This is showing me that this period of rest or this period of dormancy or keep flicking the, the light, the, the lighter, is about to come to an end. In fact, it's about to be a solid you know, spark that turns into a roaring fire that you're able to maintain. Um, I'm not getting any warnings or cautions about this. I feel like spirit is confirming, continue continue on, continue carrying on, keep trying to strike it, or continue carrying the things that are striking this and making this successful. Um, however, two of cups and eight of swords, I don't wanna say that this is a warning, but I feel like we need to pull some more cards in regards to this. I don't know if this is um, someone else concerned with this reading okay wow king of pentacles so we have a match here king of pentacles reverse three of swords six of pentacles upright this card also showed up in the last reading for number one but i just find it so significant that king of pentacles is reversed and queen of pentacles is upright i feel like feminine energy is big time moving for this pile, she is grounded, she is secure, she is stable, she is attracting, she is mag magnetized, like um, uh, multiplying is the word that's coming through. Everything she touched turns to gold and keeps going, going. It's the power in her word, it's the power in her intention. King of Pentacles right now, reversed, is feeling, I don't know if he's feeling a little distant, isolated, or this is the masculine side, feeling, um, like it needs some attention. Look, King of Swords upright has has a defense up. There's a defense mechanism and the Fool card says, don't go without me. So that's some vibes that is I'm feeling here. I just feel like some people, I, I'm going back to the match, some people are watching you. This is a very specific message. Um, so take it how, if it res how it resonates and if it resonates. But some people are trying to light their own matches and they're really struggling and then meanwhile, you just touch it and it just lights up. Or this is you watching other people kind of just lighting their matches. But either way, it's a it's a blessing for both people. It's a blessing for all of humanity seeing one person sur survive and one person thrive and make it happen. Because if they can do it, anybody can do it. We're all just kind of doing it in our own way. And the Three of Swords is showing, showing up here that there's, I'm almost getting this conflict here. It's like, do I comfort this per, yep. Two of wands, two of wands and the justice card here. Do I comfort this person? Do I comfort this situation? Do I, how do I comfort myself? How do I speak life into, you know, how do you, like how? Like this, this pile is very interesting. Um, if this is not two separate people or two separate energies, this is masculine and feminine energy within yourself. There's the feminine side that is thriving and like masculine, your ability to feel like you can do and lead and secure and you know, all of those things just feels like it's kind of threatened right now and defensive when it wants to, to, to be successful. Does this make sense, you guys? I hope that this, this is a very specific message. Um, you know, and I feel like the I keep getting like in like a bullseye, just getting closer and closer to the core of this, the center of this. And, you know, if this does not resonate with you, this is definitely not your pile because this is a very specific message. I also feel like receptive energy here with the feminine. If this is about business, um, especially with Six of Pentacles, it's about learning how to balance and work with how you're able to multiply and you know magnetize your your work um while still being a leader while still initiating new projects yeah six of wands is up right here showing me that you know you all it's like all of these green lights are saying go 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 like keep striking keep striking you know 
Um, and if this is someone coming forward, because there's a really strong potential that there's someone who might be threatened by this or might be watching your success or you're watching their success and it just feels very unfair, that's a very natural human reaction. Um, I just am feeling like, to be honest with you, there's not, you, you can't really spend too much time <laughs> um, focusing on their insecurities or their doubts. Um, or encouraging them and speaking life into them. I'm not trying to say that you need to be selfish. I just feel like, you know, show up in the way that you can. And this is a very specific message, like I said. Show up in the way that you can for them, but also not to the point where it derails you and your progress because it's very important that, you know, you're focusing on what you want, what you're building, and sometimes you can't carry everything or everyone with you along that. Um, they just have to kind of learn how to walk for themselves. Eight of Swords is here. Eight of Wands is here. Very transformative. Also, it says that as something ends, something new is beginning. Something new is being created here, especially with the Fool card. So any feelings of insecurity, any feelings of resistance or doubt, they're going to be very temporary. Let's look at your oracle because I feel like I might be shuffling more cards for you, but I want more confirmation here. Yeah, blessed. This is a period right now where things are really starting to come together for you in matters of the heart. The heart is such a powerful vibration, you guys. And I, the lightning that was coming off of this candle that I could see coming off of it, if I was to give this candle, you know, um, to the client or fix it for a client and that was what was going through I'd be like they have no trouble manifesting and this is the candle that you have chosen And I also feel like you being blessed blesses others So this is a more encouragement from the universe that says okay Don't allow yourself to think that this is unfair or don't compare yourself to the progress of other people because their blessing becomes your blessing and Your blessing becomes their blessing. So especially with six of pentacles. We're all working together believe in your dreams So that's the same thing with the spark. Just keep sparking it shed the old and Balance the emotions. Okay, so king of pentacles reversed king of uh, queen of pentacles upright and king of swords is here connected to the king of pentacles saying that there is a guard up that when this person starts feeling like you know their con their contribution doesn't matter or what they are working on is insignificant compared to what you're working on or is this going to pay off or how is this going to pay off or it's not going to pay off in the same value this is when you have to really allow other people to balance out their feelings and their insecurities, but also you balance out what's going on within you. Because even though we're working with energy here and the tarot is always showing the energy, so this could be a person, this energy could be manifesting as a person, it could be manifesting as what you're thinking and believing about yourself, but you want to, um, also this just came through, some of you guys are in a period of big time transition. Now that I'm saying this, and seeing this out loud, Eight of Swords and Eight of Wands, Two of Wands, and your fears are starting to come through and freak you out because you're, I feel like you're like magnetizing and attracting, you know, this big blessing in your life, but simultaneously questioning, can I maintain it? Can I uphold it? Can I be a leader in this? Can I carry it to grow? And you're starting to become very hardened and very like it's almost like a person who's scared who turns that fear into a blockage and turns that fear into um, a no, you know? It's like despair turns into dysfunction, turns into shut it down, we're not doing this or... And the thing is, is that spirit is telling you that it's actually right on time. It's right on target for you to let go of this old stage, let go of this old phase within your life and believe and trust and continue to contribute with the queen of pentacles, she's very nurturing, continue to contribute and and give to, you know, this dream that is that you're seeing for yourself and these signs that are showing up. Keep striking the, keep striking the lighter, everything will be okay. Loyalty, some of you guys are questioning the loyalty, forbidden. So again, there's some aspects here that are just, I don't like taboo is not the right word, but it's like some things are just not fated to happen for certain people, certain things at certain times. Apply that message how you will. However, 
they remain loyal to it, they remain true to it, and sometimes it can be disappointing. The same thing is true for you. When you are loyal to something, when you're loyal to a relationship, when you're loyal to this dream or this vision, and you start to feel like, is it not gonna come to fruition? Is it not gonna happen for me? Because I haven't seen the signs of it. There's, you have cards here ensuring your success, and you have cards here that are showing that you're at the very end of something. You're at the very end of a journey. You're at the very end of a struggle. You're at the very end of trying, 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 and all of a sudden it works, and all of a sudden there's a spark. So you go in and you nurture that so that it turns into a bigger fire. The High Priestess, I am one with my soul, and my soul is a legacy of love. There's a message that's coming through for that. The com Cosmic Egg, I hold the universe within me. I am the force of an ever-expanding love. And then you also have, I am my own guru. I know that the self that never changes. This is showing me right here that something is being, is ending and something is being born. It's a totally new venture. It's a totally new life. And it's going to be up to you to tap into your feelings of, I can do this. I'm really getting called to tell you guys to not deplete your energy with anxious thinking or defensive thinking or to deplete your energy with those who are projecting anxiety and tension onto you or if there's an anxiety and tension in relationships because again we're working with the heart chakra here as well there are sparks coming here um, at the at the altar at your altar with the moon card here work to set intention for these anxieties these tensions to kind of release and ease back as i'm looking at this i'm watching the waters kind of rise up and that can be really overwhelming and it can also be something that people might have a hard time explaining or understanding how they're feeling and why they're feeling it so just trust the fact that some people don't know that they don't have the answer you may not have the answer but go to your altar and set intention for balance Go to your altar and set intention that, you know, for strength or for the blessing, for both or for you. Or if it's both, both aspects within yourself. Next card we have here, the serpent, knowledge and healing, truth. This reminds me of pile number one. There's a lot of truth coming out, especially with Mercury now moving into the sign of Aries, um, which just happened at the time of me filming this. Um, this is giving a lot of, I don't say forbidden knowledge, because we also have this card here. It's like things that people have a really hard time stomach stomaching and accepting and acknowledging and talking about. It, But it literally will help to create this bridge. It literally will help you to cross over. It literally will help you to cross over into success. Um, so instead of being fearful, instead of being resistant, instead of, um, if, especially there's certain aspects that you are being called to let go of, to release, or this cycle, um, it just is what it is, essentially, is, you know, what's coming through. Okay, do something new, do something different. This is giving you big time Wheel of Fortune cards. That you have options is meaningful, rock on. So do you see this? Spirit is saying, you know, it's trying to empower you and give all the energy. Oh, look, they choose you. I didn't even see these cards. And love is the reason. So they choose you, why? Because they love you. You choose it, why? Because you love it. You are here manifesting it because your heart is called to, to it. So there are different things and different ways that you can explore this or different things that you can be blessed. Be open to newness, especially with the full card here. Be open to a different perspective. Be open to, um, I don't know why, but I'm getting this sense of like juggling certain things. Like there's certain things that you're used to nurturing um, and there's certain things that you're used to kind of investing your energy maybe in for other people or other relationships or other things that you've committed yourself to and you're kind of getting called into being more of a leader for yourself right now and it's kind of giving you a little defense mechanism coming up, but it's okay. Just trust it. Really, really trust it. We have open your third eye, world energy, you are a spiritual teacher, financial healing, and let your inner beauty shine. So again, this is where we, there's a lot of energy here that is connecting to others, the world, globe, you know, the internet, opportunities that are out there and available to you. And that's good because you can see the blessing in that. You can see it being prosperous. You can see the impact that is that you are going to leave. You can see the, last, the legacy that you are leaving behind. But at the same time, you have to protect your third eye energy. You have to protect yourself so that you can preserve your sense of self 
and let that light shine forward even even greater. Truth be told, there's a lot of truth that's coming out here. So if there is something, especially with King of Swords, if there is someone or something that cannot maintain, that cannot keep up or is going on a different path because something is trying to end here with this, I've got to be honest with you guys, Ten of Wands, Ten of Swords, it's something that kind of have, has kind of gone on for too long or you're just kind of sparking it for too long. It almost feels like when you figure out through the third eye um, and see the truth, it will, or they see the truth or it sees the truth, whatever the case is. Um, and again, I told you guys, it's a very specific message, so you have to let me know down in the comments. Because um, I know a lot of you guys want very, like, you want me to keep it very general, but my messages are always very specific. I mean, that's how spirit works through me. So if this is not your pile, it's not your pile. And I always set intention that whoever's meant to hear it is here to hear it. Yeah, Ace of Wands. There's a new, a big time new beginning, a new venture is the word that's coming through. New passion projects. And I just feel like you're not meant to kind of ball yourself up. You're actually meant to expand. And look, Knight of Wands, put yourself out there. Speak up, be assertive, be confident. As reckless as it might seem, it's actually very powerful. And it inspires the world it inspires others but don't but others might also be intimidated or others might feel threatened or your masculine side might feel threatened feeling like oh i can't be a leader or i can't contribute or i my power is being taken away from me that's not the case your power is actually building up and about to spark even bigger that's a blessing so take this message how it resonates let me know down in the comments everyone's going to be a little different in how they're going to move with this but i'm also very um, encouraged, you know, to come back and to hear your, your progress and to hear your experiences and to hear your testimonies on this. Um, and, you know, the green candle, you were drawn to it for a reason. Work on, you know, your career, your blessings, your abundance, and allowing yourself to, to pull in and magnetize, you know, energy from the heart because it's obviously sparking here. Okay. Um, I'm wishing you guys all the best. Oh, and with pine, I'm big time seeing the energy of pine if you're working with, um, you know, green candles when it comes to manifestation. It is very clear. It's very clear. It's very, you know, cleansing, but sharp in a way that gives direction and purpose and strength to whatever it is that it touches. And I love that about pine. All right, you guys, I will talk to you soon. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel and make sure that you check out the Bahati Life podcast because there's plenty more videos where this came from and there's lots of conversations that, conversations that we'll be talking about there. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Hello, my loves. For those of you guys that chose the Higher Wisdom Candle or the Dragon's Egg Crystal, this is your reading. Now, I'm actually going to move this candle over here so you can sit with it and observe it. This candle right now feels very quiet. All right, well, <laughs> we've got these cards already jumping out. Oh. I just heard the words, i um, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Oh. All right, so big time with the tower card here, the chariot, page of swords, reverse, and the eight of cups. This is very like, I don't know why, but I'm big time getting the, like the vibe of just waiting, something, someone waiting in the dark to see what happens. Um, you're waiting for a shock. You're waiting for something to just come in and derail. You're waiting for something to come in and uproot. Um, you're waiting for the truth to just drop. There's a big common theme about truth this week or this, this pile. Nine of Swords. A lot of you guys, and I think it has something to do with Mercury moving to the sign of Aries. I think it big time has some a lot to do with Mercury moving to the sign of Aries and Sun conjunct Chiron at the time of me filming. Or if you're watching this from the future, this is just a theme that you're in, a cycle that you're going through in your life. But Nine of Swords showed up for a lot of people. There's a lot of agita, a lot of anxiety, and waiting, waiting to 
I just feel like waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for the something to happen, waiting for something to occur, waiting for a message that is going to shock, that's going to hurt, that's going to uproot, disconnect, call you or call someone or something out. Um, Four of Swords showed up, I think, for every single pile. Queen of Pentacles has shown up for every single pile. Page of Pentacles is showing up for you. I've, I'm being called to go back to the intuitive intuition candle. I feel like this, I'm really getting this big time conflict. Oh, I like feel it in my gut right now. So I'm getting this big time conflict that someone is feeling in their stomach where it felt like things were moving forward. You know, oh my God, look at the base of the reading four of cups. So it felt like things were moving forward and things were progressing and things were smooth and headed in a direction that seemed promising. It was almost exciting and even challenging. And then all of a sudden it feels either your intuition is kind of pinging you and telling you that something is off or something feels weird or something is about to leave or something is about to happen. And then you're just kind of waiting for it and four of cups or something did happen. And now, you're kind of stuck in this four of cups energy, which to be honest with you, sometimes four of cups says, yeah, to be sometimes four of cups says, um, I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy in a way that they're like bored. But for you, it feels like, I don't know why I'm hearing here we go again, but it feels very kind of like disappointing or defeating or frustrating. But we have the death card here, the three of wands and the eight of swords and spirit is saying, don't worry. I'm hearing the words um, disruption. I mean, well, duh, tower card here. How could I not hear it? But spirit is saying disruption. It feels, I also am hearing the void. Uh, cannot be something, cannot be what spirit is saying. Cannot be, what is this? Cannot be avoided, cannot be avoided, is literally clear, spirit is saying this. This cannot be avoided, um, uprooted, and I'm also being up, like, uphold, like how you hold someone up, or how they're upheld. I don't know why that's the word spirit is really giving me these words. These are things that I'm getting, I feel very called to say these things to you because it's like, you can't, you're not meant to avoid these things for the sake of keeping the peace. These things need to be talked about. These things need to be addressed. These things need to be seen. These things need to be observed and taken care of. They need to be transformed. They need to be seen. They need to be healed. They need to be addressed. Like it was, it would have been problematic. It would have continued. It would have eventually prevailed this problem, this um, thing that was kind of like left unsaid, this thing that was left untouched, you would have chariot card here. You would have continued moving forward and carrying forward and kind of sweeping it under the rug or just putting it off for a later day or just being like, oh, I, you know, I promise to talk about this another day or we'll talk about this or we'll deal with this another day. No, spirit says, pull it up right now and, and see it. I'm getting like, when I see uprooted, it's like pulling it up and seeing that there are like little termites in there or little buggies that would have kind of infected an entire garden. Page of Swords is the truth that's kind of, you know, sitting at the bottom. And it's curiosity that brings it up. Look, Seven of Cups, Four of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, reverse showed up for everybody. Page of Cups, upright, the world card rever reverse, and the sun card. This is, oh my God, I just wanna like sit with this group right now and just be like, big group hug. <sighs> I just feel like, ugh, I don't know why, like I'm getting the emotions here. I just kind of feel like crying right now. Um, seven of Cups, it's like, don't be discouraged. Like I'm really getting this this pile that has really come a long way and just is pulled over on the side of the road for pentacles here. Doesn't understand all that's going on. It's actually like your higher wisdom. Your intuition is sharp, but you're picking up on a lot of different energies right now. 
And with the world card reversed, this is you're pulled off on the side of the road. And spirit, despite it all, spirit is saying, I just feel very emotional right now. Like spirit is, is saying, listen, you are in good hands. I know that you've kind of been here before, that you're disappointed to be pulled off, you know, or having to address this or take care of this or, you know, put it on pause right now. You're not going to be able to see everything that we see, but we are really trying to hold you and support you in this. We want to bless you. We want to protect you. We want to give to you and be generous with you. And it's a very sensitive time in your life. And when this happens, we have to make sure that you're not going too fast or that you're not avoiding certain things because we want your, your protected treasure. And this is for your greater good and your greater happiness. And I'm seeing how the chaos is all kind of pulling into a space because that's how the universe works. Every time when there's a chaotic disruption, there's all these little fragments, but gravity comes in and pulls it all back into the same force again. And you, the higher wisdom queen, especially with the you gravitating towards this candle, you're not only picking up the energy on of you, you're picking up the energy of the world or these other things or these other stuff and, and, and all of it, you're also human. So you have your own feelings, you have your own realities, you have your own perspectives. And Spirit is just saying all of that is actually very normal, it's right on time, it's a very sensitive subject and place to be in. I'm really getting a sense of, um, look, you have the sun card here, sun twice. The sun is a very beautiful card to receive, but I'm getting a sense of, you know, allowing it. It's like high priestess, my loves. When you work with higher wisdom, either my candle or with your higher wisdom self, there's a lot of so shall it be energy. This means that as the high priestess, your intuition can speak you can speak to you to call out and to set intention to magnetize and to magnify um, you know towards you certain things and make things bigger than what they are but it's always in the, the, the divine's will and it's always in accordance to divine law and the powers of the universe so when that happens you kind of you always end it with so shall it be or so mote it be for your highest and greatest good always and that helps to pull things into alignment oh my goodness happiness at hand this is a sun flower so we have a lot of sunshine here sunflower sun the sunshine and the sun meaning and then we also have the rain card here time to replenish it's this very like sun showers here you guys there's there's not a whole lot it's it's arguable you know and understandable and relatable to have fear, but you chose the serpentine egg for a reason. This is a very hot lava type of stone, and it's very, very powerful. It can be very hot. It can be very searing. It can be very burning, and that's why we pull over on the side of the road to replenish because the, the heat of it, even being out in the sun and enjoying yourself and play, Eight of Cups energy. You have to leave the sunshine sometimes and get a drink of water or dip into the pool. And it doesn't mean that the fun and the joy and the pleasure is done or disrupted. It just means that there's a time to replenish. There's a time to restore. There's a time to reward. There's a time to rest. And that's where you're at right now. There's a time to kind of pull back and allow things, people, places to choose you, to show up, to, to work out, to work themselves out for the highest and greatest good. So mote it be, so shall it be. Your will, not mine. That's a big challenge that the high priestess energy has to face is she has to be very humble in her mag magic. She has to be very humble in her intentions because all of it comes from the universe. It comes from the divine. Love. Something, something that says um, keeper. I just feel keeper of the scales, keeper of, you know, what's for me won't be taken from me. I Didn't I not say chaos? And you guys also chose the tower card here.
the death card. Even with the death card, the sun is shining through. Focus. I feel like with this card, you want to be very careful about cognizant, like very aware where you're putting your focus and your attention to. Not because you're going to magnetize it, but because it helps you to kind of ride this wave. It helps you to focus on the problem. That's a big thing. It helps you to focus on the problem so that you can through this chaos. This chaos is revealing something to you. This chaos is revealing, okay, something that is a lingering problem sub subconsciously or sub submissive, subversive. It's under the surface is what it is that I'm hearing and the chaos disrupts it. The chaos reveals, okay, this foundation is a little cracked right now. You have to address it. You have to. So instead of focusing on, oh my God, everything has gone to shit, you're actually focusing on okay, thank God that this is kind of uprooting all this for me so that I can see where the problem is so I can actually address it. That takes a big act of faith right there to be able to focus your attention while things are actively being uprooted around you and actively getting kind of shot. You know what I mean? Wow. I trust the answers I find within me. I know that the presence of love is real. And I am miraculous. My prayers create powerful channels of possibility. This is exactly what I'm saying. Both of these women are known for the internal life. They're known for being very reflective. They're also known for being very sensitive and emotionally in tune or intuitively in tune. And when things are getting disrupted, it's actually an opportunity for miracles to happen and to occur. And Spirit is saying, you know, while you're working on this chaotic energy that you're in right now, focus and pray for the miracle. Focus and pray for the healing because it's helping this energy to really transform for a higher vibration. If you're working with another person who just seems impossible, if you're working with energy that seems impossible, you've intuitively been picking up on it for a long time. And because you're so wired to preserve, you know, and to to persevere and to wired for survival and to maintain, you would have continued carrying on, but spirit sees when things are wrong and the universe will disrupt it at the divine's highest will. So when that happens, you need to not focus on the chaos and the dysfunction and all the craziness that's happening around you, but focus on the miracle, focus on the prayer, focus on the intention, focus on the answers that are found within you. Burden. The cat, independence, healthy boundaries, owl, deception, and wisdom. So these are things that are saying that the more that you put back the energy within yourself and have these healthy boundaries, that's the other thing too. Some of you guys needed to reinstate and call back into place boundaries with people, with certain things that would have big time caused a bigger problem later on. You intuitively know this. This is the owl card. You are not meant to deceive yourself or to be deceived by others or to deceive others. You're meant to be from a higher space of wisdom. I don't know why, but I'm looking at all of the owl's feathers right here and it feels like there's a message in that. Um, like faces or, you know, message, you know, something. But you're meant to kind of like focus on the unseen, the unknown. Your treasure is at hand. So I feel like there's a blessing here, you guys. There's a miracle. In all of this, in all of the chaos, it's revealing that there's a miracle here. There's a blessing. It's a treasure at hand. I'm also seeing that some of you guys, with this, you're going to stop looking elsewhere. You're going to see that you're, you can just focus right where you're at right now, and nothing is going to be taken away from you. If anything, your vibration is raising, and you're becoming the truest version of yourself building blocks and to be fair. So this is showing me again, like I was saying, that it wouldn't have been fair for you to build a foundation, especially intuitively knowing that something is off on something that is rocky. And spirit will like weed it out and feel it out and make it right. That is what is fair, that is what is right. Not just for you, but for others and the world. And then we also have this little owl at the very top giving his wisdom, giving his clarity. And it is very true, honest, and authentic. So, three of wands, continue to 
build, continue to manifest, keep speaking that energy of so shall it be, so mode it be, while you're speaking your blessings and calling in miracles, because this group is definitely being blessed with a miracle. I hope this message makes sense to you guys. Let me know down below in the comments if it resonates. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And be sure to check out Baha'i Life Podcast because there's many conversations that I'll be sharing there. Sending you all of my love. Be blessed. Bye.